going to see a mate of mine and someone who's well known to a lot of people actually, Matt Esley. I'm going to his workshop because we're going to do a little bit of partitioning for him. I'm looking forward to it actually, he's a really good guy, we've known each other for quite a while. So after a bit of an epic journey, I managed to get down and meet Matt. Although I know him through YouTube and also I've interviewed him on the radio, it was just great to get down, have a look at his new workshop. And of course, no one, none of his viewers have ever seen this before. So I felt pretty privileged to come down. The first thing we had to do was to understand exactly what he wanted me to do. So we had to sort of go through and work out all the gear and everything we needed. Hello, how are you doing? Just got, has it just got here? Oh, I'm good, I'm glad it's here. We'll start moving it in in a minute. Do you know what, it's looking good. You've got all your gear in here now, mate. Yeah. Shifted all this around, it was a bomb. Just to make enough space to get everything done. That's all right, Matt. It's like everything, Matt. You just have to make it work, don't you? So that's, it's gonna be an issue there, isn't it? Let's have a little look. At the 16 sheets of that, just one down to the end there. Keep going to the um, go, go on the floor there. I just want to go to 4.8. Here. So I knew roughly what I needed to do and we got down there and basically just started setting out. Now we had to set out to suit mass requirements and although we had a loose plan, all of these things are set to change. So I literally did a proper sketch on the floor in my book and we discussed things, how to move things to suit walls. We also then had to calculate just about where the doors would be going, where the walls would be coming into each other and exactly how we join into the steels and everything else above us. Just like a lot of other buildings, this particular steel was all over the place. No, not only was it out of level because it was running out of level, built out of level deliberately for the roof behind, it was also so out of straight. So once the lorry arrived, it was just a matter of getting all the material in and we stacked them all out. Now this stuff was so straight. It was such a nice thing to have some straight sawn material. I was saying to the guys, have a look down these, they're like arrows. But the real showstopper on this job is this particular material. This is true stud and it's an engineered stud work, which we absolutely love. Let's have uh, 20 of these in there, Lloyd. We will save hours and hours and hours using this gear. You don't have to look down it. You can just literally pick a length up, measure it, mark it and cut it. Lloyd and I started setting out for real now and we got all the material in. And what we thought we'd do was start by putting the longest wall through under the really bendy steel. We had some lights in the way, but the first thing to do was get all the sole plates in place and literally do the layout. Normally in an industrial unit, a screed floor would be nice and flat, but this particular one was all over the place. All right, that'll do us. But that's good because it gives us a bit more scope now. Yep. With our wall position, instead of having to avoid the light, we can creep it this way a little bit yep. and it'll be a much nicer much nicer job. So that light there, Matt, it just unclipped. So we can now bring our head plate favorably more into the, the steel line. At the moment, most of it was hanging out there yeah. because of the light, yeah? So we'll start at the tightest point, both ends. So we're just gonna take that that way, 50 mil, all right? So once we established exactly where we wanted those walls, I made a door rod. This is something I always do when I'm doing stud work. I don't like to keep measuring the same thing over and over. I'd always use a bit of timber. So we strung the lines down and started drilling the sole plates in. We use a very simple concrete screw without a plug there, easily removed. Incidentally, everything we are doing here, one day if Matt moves on to bigger places, he's got to take all this out again. So we need to just screw everything together. We're not going to even use nail guns on this job. We're going to literally cut the studs and fix them in. Minimal holes in the existing fabric are what's needed here. So you can see us using a very small HSS drill bit here to fix the head plates to the steel and just enough screws to hold it all in position. So 
once we've got our head plates in, our sole plates in, we can start marking out for our doorways and all of our studs that will catch our boards. So I was measuring, Lloyd was marking and cutting, I was staying up the top of the steps and between us, we were getting the studs in. This was the quickest way of doing this. We had some really good kit with us as well. We had loads of new kit that Matt had there. We didn't even bring any of our power tools on site, which was quite nice. And we basically went through putting all of our key studs in. So this is all the doorways first, the corners. Then we start filling in ready for the sheet material. So every single stud we put in, we put in strategically to catch a board joint or a door edge to make sure we've got minimal cutting of all of the sheet material. Putting all of our studs through at 600, you can do that with a true stud like this because they're so straight, so true. And then all we've got to do is put four sheets up. There's nothing to mess around with. How's the day? How's the day? It's all right, Lloyd. Yeah, now the proper guys are not here. It's all right. Yeah, we, did, we just yeah. didn't get set out. So we've got this sort of little wall through there. We've got the other wall set out in there as well. So, yeah, I think we did all right. And tomorrow, we'll hit the ground running and we'll get that bit padded and then I'll build this all through here, put the floor on, or you two are doing all the other bits and pieces. Brilliant. Happy, Matt? Oh, I'm knackered. I've done so much work today. <laughs> what about you guys? Happy? Yeah, thanks guys. No worries. That's alright, we'll see you in the morning. Bright and early the next day, Lloyd and I got stuck right in and we're using this metric OSB. So this particular sheet material, it comes in at 1200 by 2400. Indeed, it's actually three mil under in each direction, which allows for the correct expansion joint that sh you should always use with OSB. So you'll see we've used spacers there to get it all absolutely perfect. Then there's a lot of scribing in to do. Big Ed turned up with this day as well, so I set him and Lloyd the task of getting through and building the timber store. So they had to go around all kinds of steel work. We also couldn't fix up into those roof boards as well in those roof panels. So the guys were doing a great job just actually pinching it into the steel work, minimal screws, and then they were cladding. Meanwhile, I was on the outside just setting up the smaller area which was going to have the mezzanine. So I've got my pole plate, which is what I'm going to bolt to the wall. Matt was happy on the PPN nailer, putting all of those hangers on. He really enjoyed himself doing that. And I was making the first of the frames which formed this wall. So because this doesn't go up to the ceiling, I was able to make these as frames and prop them up and get them all in situ. So I was building this from one end to the other. The reason I wanted to do this was so the joists overhead could hold it all nice and true. So here's me making a square panel. You can see how much out the floor was having to jack it up against our new wall. Then I enlisted the help of Matt to get the first of the pole plates on. So these fixings are fantastic. They're a sleeve anchor. These blocks are quite soft and we, we don't want to make too much destruction in them. So the idea of these is it's a through fixing. We drill the same size hole through the timber, straight into the block work, and the sleeve anchor just passes through and you don't have to over tighten it. It acts like a pin. So all the force coming downwards is actually supported by a solid fixing. So great fixing. We really enjoy using these. The third day and I was starting to feel a bit tired now because we've been grafting on this job and um, I felt like I had a mountain to climb. I had to get through all of these walls here and all the ceiling, but I just got straight into it. The lads were still doing some work on the other side and I absolutely steamed into it, just getting all the stub work done, getting the joist through, straightening all the walls up. And as the guys were finishing, I started getting help from them as well, which was quite useful. And it was really nice because um, sometimes I actually like working on my own. The guys can work as a team. 
and then they can look over their shoulder and say, God, he's doing all right. He's on his own and he's doing all that. I'm a bit of a fanatic about construction and structural timber work. So it's a piece of a breeze to me. I almost feel like I love the challenge. So I'm slotting the joists in and what I always do is start at the ends, go to the middle, get everything nice and true, nice and straight and basically start filling it all in. Start bringing the other pole plate there on the other side of the steelwork and we're cladding it all and we're getting ready to put the ceiling boards on. So we took the edge off them to give us a nice square edge, flush with that OSB on the outside. We fixed that down through the top. So there was no cutting on any of the chipboard panels over. So all we had to do when we started laying them is lay one sheet across the back, use the offcut of the far end and just carry on through. Lloyd was doing an internal partition there. And before you knew it, we had got all the floor down Lloyd had finished the internal stud work and we were nearly ready to pack up and move on. We probably used about 3,000 screws while we were screwing this all together. And we used the same screw for everything. It's a SPAC screw, it's actually one of their flooring screws. And they're great because they're so reliable. And one day, this may all need to be dismantled. That's why we're not nailing anything together as I've mentioned. And then we got to the point where we're done and Matt starts clearing up, saving all these nice bits of wood for something in the future. This has been three days of working super fast and super hard for a particularly nice individual, I might add. Matt is just one of the nicest people I've ever met, I think. He's just uh, lives and breathes his craft. He appreciates everything that people do to help him. And um, spending a couple of days with him, and I know the guys, Ed and Lloyd really enjoyed it as well. It was epic. Mate, we're done. What I can't do you think? believe it. No? I've got two and a half days for this is mental. It was Absolutely good fun. Mental. I mean, I've got my top team here and anyway, so uh, you know what I mean? It's just a matter of getting stuck into it. But I suppose the thing is, because we had the time to think about it, didn't we? We met here, we talked it through. I was able to go away and work out what we needed in the way of materials. Um, and we were so lucky to have the metric OSB because that yeah. saves so much time. I'm not joking you. You know, you're building everything through at 400 centers or 600 mm. centers. If you've then got to start cutting rips off the sides of OSB, it's an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So it's really nice to look out for metric OSB. Um, most timber merchants can get it, but a lot of people just haven't got a clue about it. And the other thing is the stud work, of yeah. course. Yeah, I mean, so it's clear the difference that made in terms of your workflow and the speed that, that you know, that gave you. Yeah. you just not being able to sort through timbers yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It was just, you know, it's dead yeah. straight. And I know that it's, um, it's more expensive, okay? So you yeah. could go on the internet and you could go and search for, you know, structural timber four by two, 100 by 50, whatever, and find it at a price. Mm. But the chances are it's not gonna be brilliant, okay? Whereas True Stud, you buy this gear, it's got a fantastic moisture content. The levels are about 14 to 16%. They'll, they'll never change, they'll mm. always stay like that. I mean, they're not gonna dry out much more. But it's super straight because they engineer it. You've seen this, obviously, but for the sake of anyone who's not seen this before, it has, joints all the way through it. So each length is made up of many other lengths, okay? So instead of them having to have long lengths, and the tr trouble is with softwood, it just goes all over the place, just by nature. It's gonna start bending and bowing and cupping, um, whereas this isn't gonna do that at all. And it's much nicer, so you can get a pile of timber. You can say, I want 50 at this length, 30 at this length, pick them up and cut them, stack them and work with them. Mm -hmm. And the difference is phenomenal. So okay, it might be more expensive, but at least the labor saving, I wouldn't have been able to do this in two and a half days, sorting through 
all that sawn, tantalized timber, which is all over the place, you know, and I would have probably said, if we need 100 lengths, we need 120 lengths, because the mm. child, I mean, especially when you've got walls, which are 3.6 or whatever meters tall. Yeah, so this is gonna be your fabulous workshop. Yeah, this will be it, the studio, the machine This area. is where you're gonna teach me how to do fine carpentry. Yeah, oh, you guys are more than welcome, more than yeah. welcome. Yeah, we'll come down here. Do it still. <laughs> I'll give you a, a lesson in dovetails. Yeah, got and, that. Uh, Staff room, wood turning room, metal working room. I'm fully set up now. This is brilliant. So all of these, all of this wood, you're going to turn into stuff. Yeah, it'll be furniture. It'll be some marking knives. It'll be. I've got a lot of it to get through. So you have. Yeah, yeah I tend you're... to. I tend to accumulate quicker than I deplete. So it's a bit of a problem now. I suppose so, yeah. And this yeah. is going to be your store in there, your timber store yep. in there, and the other side of that wall. Yep. And so you'll have benches in here. Assembly benches and work, assembly bench, benches. maybe doing a bit of teaching, a bit of furniture making, you know, something like that. Mm. Uh, teaching tutorials with that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Show us your lathe. Show us this amazing. Oh man, <laughs> the lathe. I don't know if it works yet. Yeah. Welcome to the wood turning room. The oh, idea the with ideal. this is that I wanted to keep dust enclosed because wood turning is just a, it's horrible. And I've got metal working stuff in here, and mm. yeah, I just mm. wanted to keep it all in one mm. area. So mm. lathe, lathe all enclosed in here, it's gonna be brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what you might wanna do then, because I mean, everything's, all of the mezzanine is screwed down nice and secure, and we also take it straight over, it meets the OSB there, so it's fairly airtight, okay? Um, you might wanna put a cork joint, you know like decorator's mate or something like yeah, that, painter's yeah. mate, and just cork it there, and that'll be yeah. almost airtight then. Yeah, I mean, this is way better than I had before, but yeah, I'll go along and do that. It'll be airtight, but won't it? This is, this is such a difference. Do you have to put dust extraction on it, do you, or do you, do you tend to clean <sighs> up as you go? You can't extract from a lathe. It, okay. it's just, it launches material off and you're stuck with it. But yeah, it's a CNC lathe. I got it delivered a couple of months back. Haven't plugged it in yet, so I'm assuming it works. Is it a three-phase machine? It is three-phase. I've got to get a board and stuff installed. But... So, so most lathes only have one spindle? Yep. Or one axis? What, what happens here? Why is well, it? Well, you, you load two bits of wood and it cuts them at the same time. Okay. So double the output. Um, but yeah, all CNC driven. Somehow this thing controls that. And it does a rough cut on the front and a clean cut on the back. You see it actually cuts both spindle twice. Mm. So, so yeah. one's removing stock, the other one's actually making a nice job of it. It's do, yeah, it's doing a lighter cut on that second pass, but obviously on half a rotation. So it cuts, I've okay. seen demo videos mm. of it and it cuts really quick. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's a neat bit of kit. Yeah, so um, that's the thing with your generation. You're into technology and um, you know, you, you know, this doesn't phase you, whereas this thing here with all these buttons, numbers, dials, controls, that to me is absolute nightmare. I mean, it interests me. That doesn't mean I know how it works. I okay. know that that's the off button. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. And I'm the green is go. I, I think Go and maybe. stop. Is that a button or is it a light? Oh, it is a button. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, and, and imagine if this is now, what's it going to be like in 10 years? Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's brilliant. I love it. It's going to be great. And uh, and you're going to make all of these little lovely blocks into your knives, are you? Yeah, one, French, one down here, look. Conveniently. Oh, wow, look at that, look. That's amazing. So joiners and woodworkers, they tend to mark. You know, they do everything with a scribe. They scribe it all before they cut. It's a very gentlemanly thing to do. And when I was at college, marking knives, were always what we used. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd use a really, really sharp pencil, 2H normally, and we'd do very faint lines. And then before we got our tenon saw out or our dovetail saw, we'd always mark the shoulders with a knife all the way around and we'd cut them through. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're I, a permanent extension of your hand in the furniture making world. So, yeah, I'd thought it'd make me own. Yeah, and I think they're absolutely beautiful. I think they're absolutely, I mean, where can you find something as beautiful as that? Made by hand, made by, by hand. you. Made by hand. And uh, yep. yeah, I think that's really nice. So um, I can see why they're popular, <laughs> that's for sure. Anyway, so I've enjoyed this. It's been really good fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And um, I'm looking forward to coming back to seeing it all done and ready and... Yeah, more than welcome back. We'll have to hang some doors. Yes. I'll come yeah, back, we'll hang some doors. some doors, get some linings in. We'll make some nice OSB architrave. Mm, beautiful. How about that? Look, OSB skirting. OSB architrave, you can't beat it, can you? Love it, love it. All right, anyway, thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. We're going to get going in a minute. Yeah, awesome. All right, thank nice you. One. Thank you again.